Hello, here we are at the home of Ken Soban, and we'll be meeting up with him in a few minutes. It's been three or four years since he has converted his simple suburban lot into this beautiful native plant oasis. We'll be doing some specific walking around with him. But what an inviting space we have here. Just gorgeous. Many California native plants as well as habitat friendly features. If we look just across the street over here, we can see this is sort of probably something of what his house may have looked like. A large expanses of lawn which uses lots of water and fertilizer and um, and takes a lot of mowing with maybe some perimeter bushes like this house has. Here we are. Ken's arriving. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, this is Ken Soban. Thank you so much for Ken for showing us around your garden today. Well, so, thank you. It's my privilege to be able to show you. So my garden started as a, a project of conversion and how to convert a lawn to, um, to native plant garden. So we used the technique of um, cardboard. So we blocked out the, the grass. We covered the grass with several layers of cardboard. And then we sheet mulch. So that's what it's called, sheet mulch. And we put mulch on top and... Um, that almost completely took care of uh, the grass. Um, I've had to deal with some crabgrass uh, several times, but uh, not much problem at all. So this front small little area was like a demonstration, and then I ended up doing the rest of the garden um, <clears throat> over my summer. I'm working on it almost every day, just a little bit by a little bit. So. Uh, right now, you can see a lot is is blooming. Oh, it is gorgeous! This is this is just a the perfect time of year to come and visit it, and um, the poppies are a real show as well as the salvias. Yeah, so uh, you know I've got a variety of stuff from grasses. All the gra all the plants are um, drought tolerant, and um, all are native except uh, one or two. So this uh, bee balm is not a native but it is a drought tolerant. Um, and uh, so from grass, these grasses, to that, big giant it? elderberry bush, which yeah. I love having the big bush as a focal point or as a corner for my, my yard. Good. Do the birds use the elderberry bush much? They do, especially when there's fruit on them. Um, lots of birds are in there chasing each other around. I do have a hummingbird feeder that brings some hummingbirds in the area. and. Um, the yard, the yard wasn't very difficult to convert. Um, it just took some time, and um, you know, as far as uh, as about a maintenance, you know, occasionally I'll have a few things. So you can see, there's a few weeds here that I just pull up, and uh, you know, walk through the yard and pull a couple weeds here and there. Um, this was a grass that I actually mistakenly planted. It was the uh, Mexican feather grass. Oh yes. So I would not advise planting Mexican feather grass because I've had to do this quite a bit. After I removed the grass, um, I've had to remove many of the little uh, volunteers that have come up since. So it is quite invasive. That's so great. If you come this way, I'll kind of show you some of the plants. So we have you know, one, one plant that was already here was this big rosemary, which I just couldn't uh, couldn't get rid of. Oh. I love the big rosemary. And uh, it doesn't take much water, so we're good with that. It's great for culinary uses, too. Yes, it is. So we're when we're cooking, we run out and grab a couple sprigs of the rosemary. So Ken's first native plants. Some nice bleeding heart and some nice dark hookera. Um, California grape. There is going to be so much fruit on this. Beautiful. You can see if you zoom in. And uh, I'd like to put a pergola above the garage. Oh and yeah, that grape go that across. would that would shade the garage really yep. nicely. So it'll bloom all summer. The desert willow with the 
one to two inch purple blossoms blooms all summer. I can see Beautiful. a ladybug on there eating some aphids. That's great. This is, yes, this yeah. is beautiful, beautiful then, deer grass. This rosemary. This a, that's a, a Arctis this, aphilos manzanita. This manzanita is... Um, Howard McMinn, it's Lewis a, Edmonds. It's a real rare one from oh. Son Sonoma. It's oh, really? an endangered one. Oh, really? And I have the, the name of it, maybe by the other one. And uh, there's very few. From when I read, there was only like 75 um, native plants, plants in left? the world. Growing Whoa. in the original area from Sonoma County. That's yeah, so, and I like it because it's kind of low and kind of sprawling. And uh, what I'll it's probably lovely. do is kind of clip it a little bit and make it kind of go up, and then just keep it keep the margins. Mm -hmm. So as far as um, the amount of work that the yard takes, um, every winter what I do is I like to have the bushes and the plants kind of in in clumps and margins. So I'll trim um, with my hedge trimmer. I'll trim around the plant, and um, and then just get all so we have all fresh growth. So this plant was trimmed back to about here. Uh, okay. So I left about that much. So quite quite low, yeah, quite, quite low. low. And that way we get lots of fresh new growth, and um, and it's not all one one clump. Less it, less straggly, yeah. Yeah, but I, you know, this has kind of become a clump and I kind of like this area right here too. <laughs> just because there is quite a few plants in here. So if you come this way... Well, the poppies just sort of seed themselves wherever they want to. This started with a, a small package of poppies and they're kind of seeding themselves. So, we have uh, some salvia there. And then California fuchsia, which will be blooming in a few months. I just love California fuchsia because it's just about the only thing that's blooming in September and October. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it kind of finishes the, the garden. This, uh, this mint or the sal uh, salvia, what is this one called? Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not good with all my... I have a list of plants. <laughs> Does it, um, it doesn't matter. It's beautiful. Yeah. You have several of those all around. And as long as I, I deadhead, and that's something that I do like to do. I like to take down the dead flowers. Okay, so, so you it, do that during the blooming season. During or, the blooming season. After yeah. it blooms um, and it starts to die off, I'll take it down. And then it'll push up more flowers. So I'll have flower. It'll be blooming all, all summer. Oh, that's um, just marvelous. Just because I you know, keep up with it. Um, <clears throat> But other than that, there's very little maintenance. I mean, the occasional weed are there, here or there. Um, I have a, a plant here, or a weed that has started. So um, here's a grass. You know, Take the opportunity, pull it now. I, and that's, <laughs> that's about it. Now, this could be a, um, now that I look at, oh no, it's not. Yeah. I thought it, it might have been a deer grass, but uh, that's that's what I do. I just walk through and just occasionally take the opportunity just to pull the occasional weed. So, so. yes, yeah, some some of the native grasses will will also be sort of weedy, like deer grass and and our native um, our state state grass. The fescue. Or the it's um, stipa pulchra. Yeah. The, yeah. Purple needle grass. Purple needle grass. Yeah. I know. I started a small patch, and it's now a big patch in my yard. So poppies. We can see. We do have. You know, a few weeds in there that I'll just kind of go in and oh. pull these out. They're lovely. You know, Ken, what I really like about this yard is that, um, that besides that everything is so beautiful, but it's, but it's simple. You're not trying to have a specimen of every different kind of plant. You've right. really concentrated on one specific mm -hmm. time of salvia, salvia and, and, you know, put it uh, in several places so that you right. sort of have, you know, a swath. Throughout. And, and and there's rows and there's layers. I, I've got the <clears throat> the tallest plant and those um, you know California elderberry. There's two species of that um, or varieties of the California elderberry. There's oh, one that's okay. a little lighter leaves in the back and the bigger one in front. But that is just it's, it's height. I like the height. Um, so that might be something you would look into if you're thinking about putting a um, <clears throat> you know planting California elderberry. It gets big. Yes. It's real big. Yeah. But I like having that height there. It hides my wood pile and, and other things. Oh, yeah. So. And, the, and the neighbor's house. Yeah. You brought in some beautiful rocks to complement the plants, yeah. too. Yeah, the, uh, the landscape place on Park Avenue. Very reasonable. 
they deliver for $20 mm -hmm. and um, it's always fun to see lizards up on those rocks and oh, you know, yes. lizards will be perching sending themselves on those rocks and birds you know I'll see there's some bird droppings on those so that's that's great that they're using it so um, I've got two varieties of milkweed here. Oh, a little bit I've got the bit. showy purple and then the narrow leaf that's starting to come up and they're just starting to come up right now. <clears throat> um, some yarrow a, and... A yellow, nice big yellow yarrow. Yeah. Yellow yarrow. That is gorgeous. Another salvia here. This is, is this it's, Douglas eye, I think? Oh, Douglas? or Cle Clevelandia. Cleveland, Cleveland. Yeah, Cleveland 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 which is, will bloom later in the year. Yes. Yeah. Especially that I've, because I clipped it back. And I clipped it back to about six inches from the ground. Okay. Great. So I've got a couple other things. You know, California coffee berry. That's just blooming oh. right now. You can see the small little... Oh, bones. yeah. I've got bees on there. That is great. And the more... More yarrow. This is the yellow. This is yellow yarrow, not the California, the white one. So I guess that's not a, another California non native. Um, coyote so mint. I really like this one. It's very aromatic um, and it does spread a little bit. So you can see it's just kind of spreading around the rock. Um, I'll trim it a little bit. Um, Do you ever use the coyote mint for, for culinary purposes? No, I haven't. You'll have okay. to tell me about the. the well, the whatever you want to use mint yeah. for. Yeah, Meat, but it definitely drinks. Has it. It's yeah. really very aromatic. Teas. And I have a flag here of this. I have the I have a list, a list of a plant list. But Sweet. I have a flag for this rosemary. I have rosemary. I call it rosemary again. The, oh, the manzanita. This the manzanita. is the rare manzanita. Yeah, it's a, this it's carpentria a is just gorgeous that, that you said this is the first year. So when did you plant your yard? Was it three summers ago? I think so, yeah. Three summers. Yeah. This is the third year. So this is the third summer or the fourth summer? Coming up in the third summer. I okay. Planted, so I, this will be my... I planted it in June, the first summer. Then we had what last year and then this year. Okay, so this is, this, this is just amazing, and uh, and some nice spice bush in the back to yeah, that will. Oh, and we have blooms. Oh, oh. excellent! It's going to bloom. I'm very excited. So this will be my first bloom from the spice brush. Oh, and that's great. The spice great. brush will get nice and big. Yes. And what I end up doing, it does need a little bit more water and more shade. Um, so all the other plants have one emitter, um, and I think it's a one or two liter uh, emitter, and it'll put. Um, I'll, I'll put one or two liters, um, you know, a day, maybe once, sometimes twice a week. So oh, that's okay. That's about it. So, okay. you know, a liter of two liters a week. Mm -hmm. um, and that's about all it requires. So the spice brush will require a little bit more. So I put, I think I put three or four on that one. So you just add emitters. Yeah, just put an extra emitter, give it some more water. And, and then I see you just have some, some typical... Typical landscape trees yep. that you added. Yep, so we have uh, the red oak and a, um, what is that? It's a red maple. And okay. I did that to kind of match the, 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 the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, because we do have big landscape, big tall trees along the, the street. So I did that to match. And, uh, you know, when those get bigger, I'll have to change my plants. But it'll be fun to have a variety, have some more plant, more California natives that require uh, more shade. Yes. So... But it, and you know, Chico gets hot. We need as much shade as we can get. That that we do. That's for sure. That's for sure. So, we know this here, and boy, oh. this was blooming. This was just stunning. It's just just finishing its bloom now. Just and uh, and then the, the variety of the poppies is really fun too, because there's these bright red ones. Ooh. And we have some white ones there too. It's a little different. That is nice. It's to have With the a mountain penstemon behind it. Yeah, the penstemon is just coming out now, right? The bottom blossoms are coming out and the big ones coming out. I can see that the cat enjoys this yard. Is there a cat in here now? There has been a cat coming in and out. Yeah, uh, that's 
that is the only negative thing is that um, I do have neighborhood cats <laughs> that will come in the yard and uh, I've seen them kind of hide below some of the plants so every once in a while I'll come and you know the cats need a place to hide but they do um, you know I'm trying to attract birds also so Ken so, you are quite a birder aren't you yeah yeah I enjoy the birds I I, I did this for the birds also and um, you know if we can keep my lizards and birds but the cats tend to tend to get those yeah I like to have the lizards so another thing I did if you if you look over here okay is I drilled holes on the east side of the oh. of the cedar May come for for native um, bees so for mason oh, bees and okay. I've seen bees that have used these so there's holes, various places in the shade and the sun, <clears throat> on these, and on um, the post, great. On the post, so it is encouraging um, native bees. So and I do have quite a few native bees, and the uh, toy on is looking great. Yeah, this is going to get nice and big. It is. I like that. I haven't had to do any trimming of that. I want to get these as big as possible for this area here. And the blooming elderberry. Yeah, the, the elderberry is just in bloom. So, this is this is the the purple elderberry, and then the other one is a a red elderberry, maybe. They're both they're both purple, but they're different elderberries. I got them from um, from Florida Nursery. Uh -huh. And I have you know I have it written down my plant list. But you know, as far as weeding, this is this is the extent. I mean, this is it. This is I haven't been out in here in a while. There's not a lot of weeds. But, you know, in the, in the five, ten minutes or less, um, you know, I can get all the weeds. That looks like that's going to be a, a volunteer that I'll want to keep. That looks like it's going to be a California fuchsia. So I'm going to let that volunteer stay there. Oh, okay. But this is, this is really the extent of the weeding <laughs> that I have to do. So it's a lot less work than coming out every, every week mowing lawn in the sun. A lot less water. It uh, cut my water bill almost in half. Almost in half. Almost in half by, by doing this. Because Why don't you this come around? One, this was just one gigantic um, lawn. This, that's what this whole place was. It's just one big lawn. And it used to suck up the water. It, to, to get it to look nice, yeah. Yeah, to keep it green. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've got this nice southern exposure. And, um, and, yeah. Hmm. There's any incentives? Any uh, California State uh, subsidies? To I got the Cal Water. So I got a grant from Cal Water and a grant. Um, so for the two grants I got to do this was a grant from Cal Water. And I think it was 1000 or $1,500. And then from... Butte Environmental Council, who did the the workshop, um, I think it was about fifteen hundred dollars from them, and um, that, that was for that first triangular for section that over first there. Area, yeah, and you know, so you know, maybe the whole budget was a few three thousand um, dollars, maybe four thousand dollars, to do everything, the plants, and all the irrigation. Um, what I ended up doing for the irrigation is I just put caps on all the sprinklers. And in two places, what I end up putting is a, um, a conversion that converts um, a sprinkler to a drip tubing. And that's, and that's what I put in. So um, it's very easy as far as the irrigation, putting the irrigation out. So I've got irrigation lines weaving throughout. And the plants have grown over it, so they kind of hide it. So it's nice. Do you think that just having that incentive of the workshop and and just the little bit of monetary incentive is is important in making these kinds of decisions for converting? I think it is. It definitely helped me. <clears throat> it gave me the the head start, the push um, to get started on the on the conversion. And this it was such a big. Uh, I think there's what's twenty. I think it's close to twenty five hundred square feet. This this yeah. garden, and. Um, so that's a lot to do just in one one chunk. So they were able to, to help it out and help out and get started. And I, and I haven't looked as far as incentives, if there's more incentives um, available still. 
but I believe there is through at least the state of California. Yeah. And what about just the 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 team having a team come in and and just sort of yeah, it was fun. start the process. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun process, and and um, had the team come out. Um, John Wilsey came and gave me some pointers, and um, yeah. so Jennifer Jewell yeah. came and gave me a couple pointers, and I was looking for some you know lines of sight, um, you know, with the path that goes inside, and and uh, gave me a few pointers, but. Uh, just kind of, kind of figured it out and you know made it work. So I'm, I'm thrilled with it. It actually, it has surpassed my expectations um, of what I think it, I would have thought it would look like, um, and it's you know, very delightful. It's great to come home to all these, all these pollinators and the flowers and um, and the birds. And yeah, and the and the variability, yeah. but yet. Uh, making it look like a unified whole. Yeah. I, I really like it. And such a contrast from your neighbor's yards. Have any of your neighbors expressed an interest in... in? Um... They have expressed, but I haven't seen many conversions. There's a few, maybe one or two on the street next mm -hmm. next over. Um, but those are really, those are smaller yards. Uh, but the, that's one thing about the yards in this neighborhood is that they're very large. So it's, it is kind of a, a big commitment to, to do that and um, to convert. But if, if you're interested in converting, I would definitely say just find a small spot in your yard and just do a little bit of time and, um, you know, extend it. Um, I'm going to work more in my backyard. Um, I've got a little side yard here that I'm going to do um, just a little bit at a time. I do a little bit this summer. And, but just start, start small and work, away, work your way up. But uh, it's great for the environment. Uh, it's great for the animals. Um, I can hear birds in my, my bushes right there, so. Yeah, that's wonderful. Good. I definitely have uh, mason bees in here and little black bees. See all the bees? They're checking out, checking out the flowers. They like the salvia, whatever kind of salvia it is. Lots of bees in there.